have somebody who's been trained and they're kind of the internal coach. Sometimes they're even ICF accredited or they've gotten accredited somewhere else. But they are kind of kind of targeting a high level of executives or maybe the leadership team. And then sometimes they hire outside coaches like myself to come in and do coaching. So then the EA model hopefully gets to work with a lot of the more worker bees or management that's not at the super high level. Because I'm guessing a lot of time you don't see the highest level of employee through what you do unless there's extreme confidentiality. I would, no, I would, I would work. I'd sworn in as the expert and I'd go, this is like imposter syndrome. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the expert, but I am according to the law. Because I know, I'm, I've got the training and I've been trained to know about this, but choosing which parent got what kid or how much, I hated that. And I hated the um, forensic psychology and being the quote expert. In coaching, I don't have to be the expert except on coaching. I'm not the expert on their life or their problem or their issue. Now if I know something about it, if, if the coaching conversation tends to move into an arena where I know something about, later on I can say, well, you know, you're you're talking about something I tend to know. I, I, I know a lot about time management and, and using your calendar. And so if you'd like to have some conversation about that, I can offer something that may be helpful, maybe not. You can decide. That's when I take my coach hat off and put my teacher hat on. But it's good to know which role you're in at times with their team. And you can't always be. I mean, there is a buck stops here. Somebody's the boss. Somebody makes the decisions. But a lot of the best corporations today have incorporated a coaching model in management. You know, back in the, I think the 70s is when we started to lose middle managers and lose a lot of uh, the assistant. People had to do more themselves. And today there's a lot of virtuality. A lot of people are uh, distance, um, what, are the, what do they call that when you work by distance? Uh, uh, telecommuting. Yeah, telecommuting. There's more and more of that all the time. So whoever's the manager of that person if they use coaching skills to in, to instill kind of self-management. Skill sets you want to look at. What, where, where can you intervene? Where can coaching be of assistance with this person or this team? Decisiveness, flexibility, self-awareness, doing whatever it takes, being a quick study, leading employees, team orientation, building and mending relationships, compassion, sensitivity, straightforwardness, composure, etc. I started working Most with training in the local area where I lived in Fort Collins, so IBM, Waterpik, uh, Hewlett Packard, Kodak, etc. And a short story then got hired to be the executive coach for a woman's um, training firm for in 1989, 1990, and for 10 hours a week I actually was the executive coach for the teams that she coached. And that set my foot in the world of really wanting to do more coaching than not. When the popularization of the coaching movement kind of started in the early 90s, I joined a coach university, went to the first International Coach Federation Conference in 2005 in Houston when there was 186 of us that just kind of showed up there like it was the Celestine Prophecy or something. We weren't sure how we got there, what we were doing there, but then it grew to 300, 600, 700, 1300, 1800 at conferences. There's now 18,000 members of the International Coach Federation and I've been on their board of directors, department of chair of regulatory and ethics and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, I guess you get all this stuff behind you when you're old enough to have hung out in the profession a long time. Um, the letters after my name, which aren't of significance, is what they represent because, you know, I, I could put even more, but we all know that's not the importance. So the EDD is an educational deficit disorder. I mean, a doctor of education. Um, MCC is Master Certified Coach from the International Coach Federation. The BCC is the brand new Board Certified Coach and then Certified Wellness Professionals through the National Wellness Institute. I don't say those to boast, I say those to contextualize the fact that all of these things cross over. And I also owned an EAP in Colorado for a while and was a for hire of EAP for many EAPs. So I, I know the world enough um, and I've for years been speaking at conferences at EAP about really a lot of what you're doing is coaching anyway. So let's learn about how that has changed, how that has evolved, how it plays a big, big role in coaching today. One story that came to me, I think uh, your name's Brian, right, in the back? When I heard your introduction, uh, not only do I want to give thanks for your service and for what you do for the men and women in uniform, thank you for that, but it reminded me of a story of the first time I did a training that my wife actually got to hear because she never heard me talk, she just heard people say, Pat's always doing these gigs. We were going down to the uh, 
Colorado Springs in May of, of uh, 2001, and um, uh, we're going to stay at the Broadmoor. And so one of our students was a Air Force psychologist that was taking our training.